last split had talked about that in some interviews, the idea that they got away with things in Academy that they didn't realize they were getting away with, right? right. Like, the matchup shouldn't work this way. Like, we shouldn't yeah. be allowed to walk up on this one, but the Thresh didn't realize he can just always reflex flay. It's like, oh, yeah. we don't have control of this matchup anymore, we can't play this matchup anymore, right? And Sorry, like, we don't have bot pressure anymore. Exactly. It's like, you don't know until you know, and this is something that I think is pretty universally true about, about pro gaming and sports in general, is yeah. that it's like, you need people that are good enough to show you the mistakes you were making. Right. Yeah. If you can't punish the mistake, you don't know that you're even making it. Then all of a sudden you're you're facing off against someone that is at a higher level. And these things that you thought always worked in a specific matchup all of a sudden don't work anymore. And yeah. you're losing the matchup and you're getting solo killed. And you're getting, you know, dove and, and all these things that are happening that weren't before. So it takes time to adjust to that. It takes time to hopefully overcome and adapt and, and improve. And we'll see if he can continue to do that. Well, here we go. 12 and 7 for Dignitas. A win ties them for second most wins in the league. Dignitas still coming through the summer split looking good. And based on the record, you think they're favorite here against FlyQuest. But FlyQuest walked away with a win as well. Gwen is indeed banned. FlyQuest saying, yeah, y'all might first pick that for Fake God. We'd love it on Licorice, but okay, it's good in the ban table. So Udyr's banned, it, it does kind of seem like you're trying to almost bait the rumble and then go for something like Lee Sin and Tristana maybe yourself, uh, go for some really powerful picks uh, like that. Viego is available, and we did see Jose Diodo play it yesterday. It's also obviously a, a three-way flex potentially, but mostly preferred to be played mid these days from what I have been seeing. We saw a lot of tank Viego yesterday, or this kind of pseudo tank, I would say. Right, yeah. Shield bow into Randuin's and that sort of style. Uh, the Lee Sin does come through, so that's pretty expected. Varus, another really high priority champion if you want to go for bot lane dominance. I do think it makes sense here with Johnson. And I would just caution that if you're going to go poke Varus, you need some sort of consistent damage coming out of your mid lane because Lee Sin is more bursty, Varus is more bursty. You're going to need likely a control mage or something along those lines if you don't want to go to a double marksman comp. Yeah, and, and even then, then you're like, well, but if they just all buy random omens, we don't kill anyone, and yeah. now that sucks. Our persistent damage is cut by half because of all the armor they've stacked up. So, yeah, it may fall to Palafox. Of course, we'll see. Uh, Lee Sin Toplin, of course, can find interesting things to do as well. There we go. The Ezreal is in. Yes, indeed. We are seeing a ton of Cenobans overall. That champion is pretty much constantly gone. Uh, from what I've seen of Pro, they're still going for Kraken Slayer, but Divine Thunder Senna, outstanding as well. Strong pick. We get uh, set in here as well. Okay. A flex, top, mid, and support would not put him jungle, honestly, that much, but uh, going to be a solid pick regardless. Yeah, I do think it makes a lot of sense to be going with that. Uh, can help to brawl really early. I, I tend to like set mid a fair bit. I don't really love it into Thresh. I do think it can be difficult to actually deal with Flay, to actually stick onto them. Not only the Flay creating separation, but the slow thereafter. Like, you want to be up on top of this person who wants to be brawling with you. I like it a lot more into the Nautiluses and the Leonas and things that kind of have to be melee range of you. Uh, so we'll see if it does go down there to Aphromu, but it feels maybe more like it's going to be heading over to Saligo. Second round, bands coming through, trying to target some of these answers to Lee Sin in the top lane, Nocturne top can be a really strong answer to the Lee Sin. Very difficult for Lee Sin to actually do more than just push. You can't really all in when Fear is, the Fear is available, as well as the Spell Shield. So uh, that can be a good matchup to target. And if you're worried about Fake on as Jace, that's one of his most preferred champions. It's also a good lane into the Lee Sin. So I wouldn't mind seeing FlyQuest target that either. Yes. Let's see. Right now, Victor was gone. You mentioned high DPS mages. My brain just said Victor. Yep, that Victor mm -hmm. is like the, the default just damage mage. People play in mid. People finally hopped off Azir after the most recent nerfs from a while back. People have finally dropped them off the table. Even though the buffs came in recently, they don't care. Orianna just disappearing right now from the from the metagame as well. So Victor has been the lead magic damage champion. There's Viego off. And we get one final ban. Of course, FlyQuest. Probably going to wait on mid for a while. It means they have to kind of lock in the lease into one of those lanes. Uh, they don't know who's top lane or mid lane just yet. Yeah, not going to be certain, but it has been mostly played top. You know, really, there was only a, a few mid lane Lee Sin games at MSI, sure. and it was uh, largely from the OPL representative, yep. LCO, excuse me, representatives. So banning out some AP here, expecting it to be potentially Ooh. Double physical Play it. Lane. Play it. Yes, oh, Sin Zhao is outstanding. Now they are so physical heavy. They really, really need magic damage out of Palathos because these be champs can build tank. And Rise is solid. Uh, but uh, Sin Zhao is outstanding. Uh, uh, so much like Lee Sin and all these other champions, not a really, really fast clear. Uh, it's not quite like Warwick and Lee Sin tier. Like W is pretty good, but but you're not doing 315 six camps. Yeah. Uh, almost ever, right? Uh, so you got to skip something, but your gank pressure is great. If the W lands, you've got an 1100 range dash. 
with a knockup attached afterwards, like that's going to be a successful gank. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, you're also just thinking about the brawling. Who is going to challenge Lee Sin plus Xin Zhao as far as an early 2v2? It ain't Rumble, I'll tell you that much. So uh, that can be something that they could look to try to exploit, to try to play through top, maybe go for those Rift Heralds. That's kind of what people were expecting when they saw the Jose Diodo and Licorice combo was this was going to be the duo that you really had to watch out for. So pretty interesting stuff. It will be the Jace likely that you have to actually lane against here though for Lee Sin. So that was one of the matchups that I was thinking FlyQuest might've wanted to ban out. They opted for the Viego instead, but this is a tough laning phase for Licorice. That does mean it will be set mid. Of course, Leona is gonna be going bot, Rumble in the jungle. And we're really looking for AP. I just don't think you can afford to go full physical here with the ability to go early Zonia's uh, yeah. for the Rumble. Ezreal's even building Frozen Heart these days. Leona's set plus set. Leona. The Silas, the Silas is something, but the Silas to me still doesn't force a lot of MR, right? You know, uh, for for the tanky characters, when I'm playing against a Silas, like I know as set, Silas cannot go on me in the team fight and win the team fight in any reasonable circumstance. So I am just saying, you know what? I don't need MR. All I need is health. I'm still gonna go Randwins. I'm still gonna go Deadmans. You know that type of build. So. I do have concerns for FlyQuest if they don't get massively ahead with this sort of a style of composition. Yep. One wrinkle to that is you can steal the Equalizer, which is significant magic damage. So that could help to alleviate some of their issues. But still, when you're looking at Lee Sin, you're looking at Zin, we're expecting it to be Poke Varus. That is the meta. If that is the case, you're very physical damage heavy. You are low on DPS to deal with these frontliners. Therefore, you pretty much got to snowball the game. Yeah, but hey, you picked Sin Zhao. Like, if there's you a champion, it's snowball the game. And Varus also, I think, is fairly early game focused. Uh, good luck really pressing Leona Ezreal. I mean, Leona's going to play back and Ezreal's Ezreal, so good luck with that one. But that should have some level of pressure. It means that you're going to have bot pressure, which means Thresh can move around, which means Dreams can go do stuff, and you can leave Varus alone for a little bit of time. Uh, not the best under turret alone is Varus. You're going to get dove, but you yeah. have some time to move. You've got a Sin Zhao. Like, that is enough to go, you know, kick the ass of some mid laner. And, and it could be even just the, the call is, hey, okay, Licorice, you're going to be the playmaker later on. Survive top lane. We will focus bot. You will push it in. Sure, you can't maybe kill the Ezreal, but then you take dragons. You snowball. You look to pressure towards soul. Force your opponents to come to you, fight you before they are ready, yeah. before they have all these items stacked up and really are getting efficient with the additional armor here. But this is going to be an exciting one. Yes, it is. We are on to the Rift, digging the toss 12 and 7. With the win, they are at second place in wins. Ooh. They really have been outstanding so far in 2021. FlyQuest got the new logo. They're uh, rapid renewable energy this time around. Every kill, every ocean drake, every tower, those all add up as they'll donate every week. Uh, the proceeds, LCS and Academy together. And we get a late invade. Well, I guess a medium timed invade. Blackwell's gonna walk in, sweep her on, get some money. And Jose Diodo, I think, leeches the XP as well. But as long as it's across four, a soul laner will level up off six minions, I believe, is the track. So there we go. Wow, Mother Earth wants a uh, FlyQuest like win. Thank you, Mother you Earth. The planet cheering for you. Yes, that's good. <laughs> All right. Well, really excited to see how Jose Diodo <laughs> does do. <laughs> Beautiful Kaisalus game. Oh, through. Great. Actually, very Most true. Most games are now. Actually, he's banned enough. Yeah, but there's as the more the more the better. I've seen too much mm -hmm. Kaisa. I like the mix up here. Jose Diodo has been giving it to us. Viego yesterday, Zin's out today. It's pretty exciting stuff, and and I hope that he can you know showcase a good performance on this uh, because I really do like seeing the jungle meta shook up a little bit you know oh. i want to see things like the fiddle i want to see things like the zin uh, things that are actually really successful and popular in a solo queue right now a uh, transition to pro play well, first queue lands means you have to take it so they're brawling back and forth licorice huh. likes his fight against fake god and turns out fake god is like you know Doesn't what you like landed it. the queue that was rough but now he's like well i've got a turret so you can't follow me anymore puts the autos back in but hey doran's shield is all about regen and the potion already burned out of fake god yeah, absolutely. And and a lot of Lee Sins in this type of matchup will actually just take a very defensive route and start even like safeguard first or they'll go E and just say, I'm just going to focus on, on last hitting and wave clear. So I uh, may be caught a little bit off guard there by Licorice. Starting Q uh, is the option you want to go for in a ranged matchup if you're looking to get aggressive and Licorice definitely was. It was. So now we look at the level two spike that we know is coming in the bottom lane. Dreams gets the same as, gets to save a stack for good measure. And indeed, Neo's just last hitting with Q's best he can. I don't even think he drops CS right now. He's got everything to farm still, so it's not going to hurt too badly. 
See how the farm under turret goes, but yeah, not going to be a huge risk there. We'll drop a little bit, but it's not the end of the world. Two melee's gone. All right, that is 42 gold denied. Mm -hmm. That's, and that's the kind of small advantage you get by playing the lane appropriately, getting the wave to hit the turret a little bit and, exactly. and zone them off. And and you kind of get this slow push going where they're not just hard shoving, they're stacking it up, and then they're trying to make it so you have a lot of minions to actually deal with here. And if Afro moves that's up to farm, they want to be able to punish him, right? Hit him with a flay, hit him with a hook, be able to land the damage on him so Afro couldn't step up to just use the relic shield charges just yet. Um, they are, as a result, you know, the starting to really gone. bleed a, a lot of this farm. I mean, there's there's still a couple extra minions for him to grab, but he's down 11 CS already. Is and he allowed to get cannon? <laughs> Even? Uh, okay, he materialized. Okay, he's cheating. He they got the it. cannon. He did it. Wow, that was a tough one. Good job, Afro. <laughs> That's tough, man. You gotta you gotta know what to give up, and this is something that you know a lot of pro players are very good at at actually learning these matchups and just recognizing. Okay, in some of these certain situations, you have to give up multiple uh, waves. You have to give up multiple minions. They're looking for Licorice top here. Saligo is behind him, so this would be a three-man play here. Going to be tough to outplay. Saligo is walking up. Here we go. Three v one. There's the stun fake. God has aggro. Slams into the skies. Doesn't even have to flash. It's effortless, but watch out because Palafox is here. Palafox cannot find Fake God. The Flash gets him away. He's going to stay alive. A clean dive. They can toss off to a great start. That was really nicely done. So Ligo got the push mid lane, roamed straight up to the top side, and notice how he did the full wraparound. So there's not even a chance to actually escape. You know, Dardock's coming from the front here with Fake God. So Ligo's already behind you, so you can't even look to actually retreat. And I think that Licorice was given a little bit of kind of a false sense of safety because he went and he wore to try. He saw Dardot coming in. He's like, you can't dive me with just Rumble plus Jace. Like, that's not going to happen. I'm going to be able to stay safe here. Yep. But once Saligo was there too, nothing he could really do. Great early dive. You get the quick reset there from Fake God as well. He's got the tier and... At least he will have to head out towards mid lane as Palafox used his TP to go top. So he's going to be covering there and they'll likely just reset the waves and then look to swap back. Yeah, I'm curious when it does switch over because obviously you'll almost always lose some golden XP on the transition. So unless you think the matchups are unplayable, you, you just lose out guaranteed something when you make that swap. So you don't always have to. We'll see if it does happen. We've got the mid lane pushed away. Lee Sin walks up and okay, yep, Liquid right now is just staying. Sin Jiao on the farm. Keeping up with Rumble, but keep in mind, Rumble got a gank off. So... Uh, obviously, Dardot getting more done right now. Jose Giotto, five minutes in, finishes camp number eight. And now, we've got Rumble maybe walking Licorice towards mid. Here we go. He's going to be in range soon. Licorice flashes. He didn't have a ward to jump to. With trinkets on cooldown and didn't want to get stunned into killed. Yeah, he was worried about the potential E flash or just getting grabbed in there by Saligo. So, Licorice getting targeted pretty heavily here. They are pushing this one in. Jose Giotto, do they want to go for the dive? It's flashless. Like, you just start hitting him with the buttons. He's going to dash around. He's going to go to the sky. So the Diodo has a flash away from turret aggro because Sully goes TPing on time and Licorice misses the Q. Has a slow, but he's stunned up. He's losing a lot of health right now. Has a teammate to jump to go. Going to stay alive. W poke not going to land. Not going to find that slow. Maybe could have turned it around, but. As now both strong with the top side, everyone's running away. That was a really quick TP from Saligo. That was critical. They don't have three members there, so you can't just insta-kill them. You only have the two, and Jace is able to use uh, the knockback in hammer form to actually buy him some time to create a little bit of space. The very early TP from Saligo means they can't stay around any longer, and the dive does fail, so FlyQuest trying to get a bit of a counterpunch themselves here does not end up working out, and that was a fair bit of time spent from Jose Diota, who is now falling behind in farm. Uh, in this jungle matchup. Fake God's going to be able to push in. And Licorice won't be able to do anything about this low EHP Jace, so it's just collecting the farm and accepting the deficit that they've already accrued. Look at the game right now. Almost 1,000 gold puts Dignitas in a great start. Obviously, there's much more game to play. We have not yet seen the Dragon stacking. We know FlyQuest winning the bottom lane. 12 CS right now with... Uh, looks like they're both joining the lane at the exact same time. Jose Diodo going to knock down bottom Scuttle. No problem again. Yeah, he's going to be about a camp and a half, two camps behind the Rumble. Not sure exactly how much CS Dardock poached from lanes as he helped out, mm -hmm. but uh, certainly, again, more getting done there on Dardock's side. But with the bot pressure there, starting on the first Drake, Mountain the slowest of the four to kill, but it's not going to change much of anything. Palafox going to mark solely go. Maybe attack the war, but now the squad is coming around, so it turns out that maybe they don't get it. They have taken set open dunks right back into the team. Big damage right now. The second dunk coming around, they're still fighting for it now. That is going to be Johnson falling. Dardock finds a double kill. The Rumble just showing up and winning the fights by himself. Oh, I mean, the farm advantage showing through. Dardock hit six before he came down. Jose Diota is still five. 
you take that fight and he got the perfect equalizer across everyone. They get all the kills, they'll get the dragon. And this game feels like it's getting out of control very fast here for FlyQuest. Quite behind in the early stages. You can see this one one more time. Sligo knows that it's going on. He's just kind of fishing around here. As Dardock arrives, he has the equalizer going straight on in, clapping multiple members together there. Really nice equalizer. He gets the overheat, roasting him up. Yeah. And honestly, it felt like Palafox just sort of wasted his own ult. Like, what do you care about? No item set in the middle of your team. He's not doing anything else. He already burned the ulti. Mm -hmm. We actually saw Rumble go down to about a third. Like, target selection could have changed that fight a little bit. It probably still goes Dignitas' way. But regardless, hey, we talked about it in the pregame. Imagine Dignitas with a good early game, and here it is. And, you know, based on track record, this means they just walk over their opponents because the mid-games have already been so good, even yeah. with deficits. I mean, I think especially given the compositions, you're going to be looking already to kind of heroics. You're looking towards playmaking from the side of FlyQuest. It's got to be the kick in on someone. You got to be making things happen. But Cleanse Ezreal is diff difficult to actually get onto and, and take out. And if Neo is untouched, even if you get someone like the Jace, you know, there, there's a lot of potential punish there uh, from the side of Dignitas. And as we start to see the armor getting built up, it's going to get problematic. Of course, Dignitas isn't stacking any armor just yet, so there is still time for FlyQuest, but they've got to make something happen. Pretty good damage here. Faker kind of set up Licorice. He's down to 300 health, has to ult to get away, but the Equalizer's right on top, and he's got nowhere to go in time. Dardock just collects the kill. Thank you very much. 4 and 0 oh on the Rumble Jungle. <laughs> he's got all the kills here for Dignitas, taking over this one. Licorice maybe not realizing that the rumble was there, probably would have needed to just use the ult immediately to disengage to stay healthier uh, for that potential ult coming through. But now on the bot side, look for that engage. Pretty good damage. Johnson did have to a little bit. Uh, took an auto or maybe two as they try to shoot back now after me at 300 health. Chugs a potion, but be careful. Jose. Okay, stun's going to be only a slow. They want to block the Q's good play backwards to jump in for Ezreal. The snipe going to come across, trade one for one. But now Neo, his days are number. I'm sorry, you are not the one. Taken down, Jose Dioto, Agent Smith. <laughs> he's even got that skin. I don't know if he's playing him, but it would have been perfect. All right, look at up on the top side here. We'll be able to clear out the wave. Nice little battle back there from Fly's Guest, getting a couple kills. Unfortunately, none of them do go on Johnson, and he does end up going down. Palafox here trying to roam up, trying to answer this constant pressure. Lakrush has been attacked pretty much from the word go. They didn't ban out the Jace to protect him in this matchup. And he has been feeling the hurt here. We can watch this one one more time. The flay did not come through on the initial engage there from Dreams, but a lot of damage was landed with the three passive stacks up there from Johnson. He hits the piercing arrow. They sidestep onto the Leona ultimate. Jose Diodo is coming through. This time the play was there, but Neo flashing forward, finishing him off. Does mean he will eventually go down to Jose Diodo, but at the very least, he got a kill for himself. The opposing Varus did not get a kill. So the gold is going to be very equal between these two marksmen, despite the fact that that Jose Diodo, you know, gets that kill for them, and Johnson's going to be up a lot of farm. So on 20CS going to feel pretty good. Obviously, we are seeing the Lethality build come out from Johnson, right? We're, we're expecting Prowler's Claw to be the build. That is the common one. It's actually going to be just tank Zin Zhao. Interesting. He's going towards the Bomby Cinder here. So at least in solo queue, I have been seeing, you know, kind of more aggressive options, more of the skirmishy style options. Yeah, clip your shield bow usually. Yeah, exactly. So you know, I've seen shield bow. I've even seen some Divine Sunderer. Uh, this is something that I haven't seen as much, so we'll be playing more of a utility role. It may just be that he's like, hey, I'm not snowballing the game. I've got to kind of go back and just make sure I'm, I'm worth something, as Dardock like is extremely strong. But, I mean, Dardock is here. He's up two levels. He has equalizer. All this right, go next bad. try. How good's the engage going to look? Equalizer over the top. They've just locked down poor Dreams. He's not tanky enough, and it's time for Fake. Got to show up as well. Flashes in, doesn't find much. A quick root is going to lock out the rest of the squad. they got to disengage for that one. But it doesn't mean a whole lot else. I think we tried some heroics. So you don't want to go for an ulti to maybe knock him in. Doesn't find much more with that one. Still, though, one for nothing, a great start. And now with Retarial Summit, it's going to be even more gold to Dignitas. Yep, and they can't really even get a punish. Licorice is actually going to TP down here, but 
I don't think they're going to be able to get anything from it. And Dardock just read the play. Okay, well. Goes from the kick, going to find a lot of CC. Dardock gets the stopwatch, though, buys a lot of time. Is the re-engage going to be any good? This time it's actually pretty relevant. And just gets kicked right back out. The shield is on. Goodbye, Jose Diodo. Flashes, but Sad is here. Flexes for good measure. Poses for the world. And then punches them to get the kill. No problem there. Palafox does even have a good way in. He's going to go for the suplex. Pushes in one. So they go against the shield, though. And it just means nothing. They've got not enough damage. The arrow's solid, it lands, but they're too healthy. Yeah, Dignitas has three members of very low health, but FlyQuest unable to get anything there. Bad goes to worse. Darnock just had the perfect read on the play, right? You just attacked bot lane. You know bot lane has no sums. You know that this is the one place on the map where FlyQuest are maybe feeling strong. So he just goes, he sits there. He has the Rift Herald to drop even if no one shows up. And when they do, it was always going to be doomed there for FlyQuest. The easy equalizer coming through, getting them the first kill. They get the Rift Herald plates as well. And this is that follow-up play here. Darnock playing very kind of cocky in this situation because he has the stopwatch and he's feeling that he can maybe even bait in more. Jose Diodo trying to escape, but Licorice goes down. The counter TP arrives from Saligo. He goes in. Yes, the clap was sidestepped there by Jose Diodo, but no way out for him. And Dignitas just getting further and further ahead. He's not doing enough damage. Honestly, Saligo himself is just too tanky. You're, you're not doing any real damage out of Palafox's stolen ultimates right now. He definitely needs a better target, but now we look at the next attempt right here. Just out of the range of the turret. Knocked down the waves. We know it's going to push. 4v1. Fake God, your days are numbered. So he goes in for the engage to go fight Licorice. Says, hey, if you want to chase me down, go through my turret. So they do. Q's going to land. Ezreal, yeah, you can't chase this one anymore, Lee Sin. And now Fake God plays it right. He plays it right. He goes through the team. He's going to find Johnson. That could be a little bit scary. Is it going to be enough damage? Varus gets a big snipe, but he's going to be stunned up and hit back. The cleanse comes across, and Here's they knock him down. Rocket Belt finds the kill. He's unstoppable. Fake God did everything he could. It makes it a one for one. Nicely done. They do at least get the one for one. Uh, Tardock does not decide to commit forward into that. Doesn't want to drop the ultimate. <laughs> Tardock is cracked as he is, Jack. True. All right. Uh, just going for the counter jungle now. And I mean, Jose Diodo just kind of falling further and further behind. You know, Dardock closing in on a three level lead. Licorice going for a play, but will they have the follow up? Uh, they might not. They're going to have him dying, though. He's going to fall. No low up. But now the re engage means they're just dead again. Yep, they're getting chased down. He's got to flay backwards, but the flash stun is there. A double kill. Dardock's on, I think, six or seven kills at this point. Oh. Really cannot be stopped. Oh my god. Dardock is just completely taking over this game. I want to see the Dark Seal, you know, get upgraded at this point. Give me the Mage Eyes. He's got 10 stacks already. The worst part about it is the composition doesn't even really matter at this point because they haven't even built up the armor. That's going to be coming later, and it's just going to get even worse. I mean, FlyQuest knows they're insanely behind. It's kind of you're just going for desperate plays, right? You're hoping that he's by himself. You're hoping that he can get a pick. Yep. He is not, so Licorice just dies instantly. Palafox goes down right after it. This game is well and truly out of control here. FlyQuest got about a, a snowball's chance in hell of winning yep. this one. It, it's tough. Uh, scoreboard, one, two, three. Uh, sadly, it's 12 to three. That's Mage eyes. Let's Yay! go, Dardock. I never doubted you. <laughs> That's good. He's looking good. He's looking good. He carried on the Lee Sin. He's carrying on the Rumble. So far, so great for Dardock. He's missed out on one co-participation. Mm -hmm. Sad it's only 11 Ooh. out of 12, but... Underperforming. Yeah, wow. Just, oof. Tragic down there, but the Mythics are coming through. Divine Thunder, of course, done for the Ezreal. Stride Breakers in for Sully Go Set. Eclipse in for the Jace. Yeah, looking good pretty much everywhere. Time for the second Herald. The first one, I believe, crashed in the bottom lane a while ago. This yep. time around, they're going to go ahead and knock down another turret. Uh, top lane in shambles. Mid lane a bit healthy, but we do the rest of that damage before too long. Yeah, there's just, right there's just no way for FlyQuest to contest anything that's close to an even fight. At this point, you're hoping for like 4v2s, 3v1s. If it's not that, you can't fight. So Palfox is going to steal away the alt, clear out the wave. But they still have the Rift Herald, so they can knock that down if they do one. And even on the other side, you know, Licorice is so far behind at this point of the game. Already has four deaths. He's been picked on start to finish. Yep. Yes, Jose Diodo has his Mythic, but he's the only one on the team that actually has a completed <laughs> Mythic at this point in the game. So it's looking rough. That is rough. And they were clapping bot lane, but it's not going to matter now. Pushed into the wall. Darda claims the kill. Add four pages of the book. 14, let's go, he's closing in. Continues to grab more names to write into the book here. Licorice up towards that top side, but Dardock is around. No chance to get anything done there. 
Jose Diodo may look for a play here, but Clem's flash, and it's Ezreal. Unless he shifts forward, not much of a chance happening. Uh, not going to let the W good arcane shift by Neo, then sidesteps the skill shot. Slow this time, but there we go. All right, finds up the knockout, but not much more. Good flash gets away, and he needs that lantern. Stays alive. Afro goes in for a ride, but able to walk away easily enough. Force the flash, small victory there, but you're down 6K at this point. Dignitas has been running this game. They've got the dragons. Just look at the jungle gold lead. I mean, that is honestly insane. 3,200 gold ahead at this point for Tarnock. He is yeah. so ridiculously rich. He's half the gold lead. And, and that doesn't count the absurd efficiency of a 14 stack Magi's. Uh -huh. Like in stats, it's more like 4K. And it's like, yeah, this and is. The level lead. Yeah, this is a high resolution rumble. It's looking really good. <laughs> high resolution? Yeah. Uh, he's the, four, the 4K. He's caught gold in 4K. Lead. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, maybe. Who knows? You know? <laughs> you, need, you need all those pixels, all the glory to see how much you are just clapping FlyQuest right now. Okay, so if you're behind, are you less pixels? Is it yeah, like a, yeah. Like you're, a 180p you're, VC? You're, yeah, you're the, like, you know, one bar of, of uh, cell reception, uh, <laughs> like, you know, loading up YouTube. Like, oh, I can... Yeah, it's a head somewhere. Okay, yeah. It's uh, a disaster. A yellow team is against a green team, and I got nothing else. I don't know. Might as well just join the audio cast, which, <laughs> I mean, those guys are doing a fine time over there, so... Um, all right, well... Zonia is done now for Dardock too, so uh, it gets even harder to take him down. Second items are going to be coming through here pretty quick for Dignitas. They'll crack this last outer. They already got the one in top. They got the one in bot. Add the one here in mid now as well. Just about 7,000 gold at this point, and Dardock is just running this game. They'll go right down towards the dragon. No chance of contesting this, so for FlyQuest, it's a hope and a prayer, and you look towards probably Soul, you look towards probably Baron, you don't contest anything besides that, and you just pray that you find a miracle hook, a miracle kick, something that can get you a quick kill to maybe turn it around, because barring that, and honestly that like five times in a row, yeah. this game is over. Yeah, because every every you know kill you get, all right, it's you know baseline 450, 300 for the kill, 150 for the assist, and then okay, can you add up any more? It's yeah. you know plus 700 for the shutdown. Okay, so 1150 if you kill Dardock. It's you know 600 if you kill off Soli Go. It's 600 if you kill off Neo. Okay, hey, you get all three of those. All right, you've got like a third of the gold lead back. Cool, but now they're back to 450 if you kill them again. So mm -hmm. uh, can you get a turret off that as well? Well, no, because the waves are all pushed in. Like, look where all the minion waves are. They're all past the river. They're yeah. all on, on FlyQuest's side. So you kill one off, and you're like, well, we pushed the wave up to the turret, but and we got to go spend our gold because we need to catch up on items. And now we're kind of getting close to the point of the game where the armor is going to start coming through, where it's going to get even more difficult for them to actually burst people down. You know, Neo, uh, we'll see if he does go for the Frozen Heart with the... Cloth armor picked up there. It's likely going to be the third purchase here for him. Just going on to the mana. More CDR. Going to be difficult to burst down. The locket has come through as well for Afro. So that's going to make it even harder to burst them down as well. And things going to be getting really, really tough here. Probably Steric second or something for Saligo. And then I would expect him to grab some armor. But might not even need it. Because the game could just be done by that point. Yeah, true. Now, let's see. Jump over the wall, get rid of the wards. The can now start playing the Baron bait. And I got to point out, I know uh, any longtime League fans out there, Dig Baron has been a meme for a while as, as very poor. I will say, though, in 2021, they have flipped the script. Dig Barons are often outstanding. They, they get so much done. Uh, oftentimes, these mid to late game situations. And that is a Thresh spotted by a Rumble, spotted by a Leona. And you're just dead. You're just getting burned down. The stun is enough. Sidestep Solar Flare, but has to fly up to his own jungle. Jose Diodo owns no part of this map. Yeah, they can't get anywhere. And when you're this far behind, the support often suffers as far as the experience. When you're walking in, you're four or five levels down. Yeah. It is really tough to face check that. And it's straight onto the Baron now. They already forced the flash from Jose Diodo. So he doesn't necessarily have an easy way into the pit. We'll see if he can get a W, E over the wall, and then maybe get some sort of a miracle steal, because that's kind of what you're looking for. Bit of vision. Palafox grabs Rumble ulti, pops it to go for the damage inside the pit. Gets it's dunked right back in. That's a kill picked up right now for Dignitas. But what about the chance of a spite steal? Jose Diodo can always W the Baron and then E to it. Flash is not needed, but if he's dead, he can't steal a Baron. Has to pop the ult to get away, and Dig just goes for the kills instead. Dig Baron is going to find themselves 2-1. to one. They get the Baron at the end because they kept Dardock in the pit and made sure it happened. 16-4 to four in kills. Red Bull Baron picked up. Dignitas all the way through. Really nicely done there by Dig. 
Make no doubt about it. They don't allow Jose Diodo to have any chance of getting in the pit here. Soligo fighting on the other side, pushing Licorice out, and then Fake God just kind of gets in there. Palafox goes in with the stolen Rumble Equalizer, but it's only really on Dardock, and he has the Zonies available. So it wasn't that effective. And then from this point, they just got to make sure that there's no chance of a steal. So they're piling over the wall. Neo goes in, Fake God goes in, Afro goes in. They do lose their support, but at the end of the day, who cares? You got a couple kills of your own. You got the Thresh kill to start that. You took down the bear, and now you have everything that you need to really close out this game because it's a 9,000 gold lead. You're on soul point. They are doing so well. All right, question is now, Dignitas, how much do you get before you turn around and just claim the dragon just to, to you know, check it off the checklist at this point? Top lane under fire. Only two minions means they probably don't get the entire turret unless they want to tank up a couple of shots to make it happen. Ezult for some wave clear and spotting defenders. They see that there are none. Put in a bit of damage, but they're not trying too hard, right? Other champions aren't hitting it just yet. Wait for the next wave. Now it's there. They know it's going to be theirs. So, okay, turret number one claim. Check that one off the list. Okay, turret score is five. Next up, all right, bit of damage elsewhere. We get a Silas Cliff pushing. Going to find FlyQuest's first turret of the games. So they get one objective now on their side of the map. Licorice obviously can't fight Soligo. go. Now it's time for the inhibitor turret. Now to some of this, FlyQuest kind of have to give these away. You're probably never defending those turrets anyway, so why even bother getting the, the Nexus. Done. But yes, the Nexus is the play. Equalizer comes in, decent damage, but Johnson's going to stay alive, and now the real defense begins. And it's enough to just say, okay, we will in fact keep our Nexus. That's not going to do much more. Ooh, Licorice. Does he look for the hero play here? Maybe some sort of a kick, but not going to be able to find the angle. Is spotted out, yep. pushed back, and Soligo's pushing mid. Yeah, Soligo's already pushing mid, so they're going to be able to just come over here and look for this next inhibitor. And you can see how quick the equalizer cooldown is. It's already more than half the way done, right? So by the time they're actually threatening for this inhibitor, Darnock might have it back, and then just drop they it one more time. Find a hook. This might be the attempt. Zonia's going to be popped. Equalizer over the top. Can they take the fight? A snipe comes in, but he's just a little bit too far ahead. There isn't enough gold. A flash to safety. That stun. Probably would have killed him, so a good defensive flash. But it does mean the siege can finally be stopped. Enough damage out of the jungler means they lose top inhibitor, but they do not lose the mid inhib. I think they're going to keep going. I mean, Dardock's just going to heal up off a of camp here, use his smite yep. to heal. He's back to full, basically, and he has equalizer again. So now you just walk up, you drop the long range equalizer, you push for this mid inhib here, and try to kind of secure game ending damage potentially. Jose Diodo down to about one quarter HP. Don't they the still have not yet gotten the turret itself. Equalizer not going to be cast just yet. They get the first stun. Ulti in for Singe out. Fake out finds a kill. It's traded back, though. Top laner's dead. Palafox flashes after Azonius. True Shot Barrage not going to kill. And as Baron times out, indeed, FlyQuest do defend the mid lane. But only for now, because Ignatas don't care about Dragon. They want to take the base. They're going to knock down this turret. Johnson forced to flash away. Soligo still, still on the chase. Flashes in for a small stun. And it's enough damage for Neo to claim it. So they're ready to keep on going. Dragon Soul not required just yet. Claim the inhibitor instead. It got a little bit greedy. Darduk was trying to go to the dragon as they were trying to go for the mid and hib. And FlyQuest does get a couple kills back. Palafox with the very long distance TP here. He wants to find someone greedy. The sweeper is uh, pretty intricately okay. timed, but it's enough to find a thousand gold shutdown. Leonult means pretty much nothing. Aphromu gonna have a friend coming around as Soligo shows up. Palavox with a big heal, and now he's got reinforcements. Lee Sin has rejoined the fight. So is it going to be enough? Big shield for Soligo, and now the stun's gonna miss yet again. Palafox still in the mix, has plenty of mana, but he's gonna start running away. Aphromu a bit low, but he is not the ideal target. Palafox gets a shield, jumps back to his squad, but one punch will kill a man, doesn't oh. quite get it. It. Side steps. Dreams runs away, but Neo's gonna take him down and turn him into nightmares. Palafox gonna dodge away, will not be shock blasted to death, but at the end of the day, it is still only the one kill for FlyQuest, and the dragon will still go the way of Dignitas. Yeah, some heroics coming through there from Palafox, but at a certain point, you're just too far behind. Smack him over the head with the wallet. Dignitas fight their way out of this one anyway. I really like the attempt here from yep. Palafox. You've got to go for the desperation plays. They knew that there was no flash on Dardock, and he had no Zonius. They forced that in the mid lane. So he can just straight up burst him. He gets the 1k shutdown. Aphromu, very, very tanky here, so not able to quite get that kill on him. But Palafox, with this W, just continuously healing back up, surviving through the whole play. They just don't have enough damage, unfortunately, to really push through and get the kills because Varus is dead, your jungler's not there, so you don't really have the full squad, and despite the fact that Palafox is able to survive, the Qs don't land, the nice sidestep on the Ezreal ulti as well. 
Still, it is just the 1k going over to Palafox. Soul goes the way of Dignitas, and two inhibitors are still down, so it is incredibly hard for them to get yeah. anything done. It is limited wave clear, just defending two inhibitors. But right now, Dignitas making sure they're not going just one way with the farm. It's Dardock pushing in top to make sure he's not just losing that golden XP to his own wave, to make sure he gets his share. And then FlyQuest can knock the stuff to the side. Bot lane fight between Licorice and Fake God. Licorice down a level, but still feels comfortable enough to try to put in some pressure. So the four and four is what happens instead. And Palafox once again grabs Equalizer with almost as much AP as Rumble has, but not as much. Honestly, Dardock certainly more lethal. Equal level, that feels good as well for Jungle to keep up with the mid laner so long. Mm. Obviously, he's been a huge factor this game. Highest level on his team. Finally, Fake God reaches 15 as well. And now we wait for the next bit of the push. But honestly, without Baron buff, minions are clearable. Licorice having to play a bit more defensively on the wave clear side. Like, Bot is being pushed in, but still able to get rid of the minions. And as this all ticks down, no more gains. Yeah, it's going to be a play towards Baron. The one thing that they did accomplish is they kept FlyQuest wrapped up in their base for so long. You take away the jungle camps, you retreat over towards the Baron, and you know that there shouldn't be as much vision. Of course, there is a pink in the pit. That is the last ward that's just kind of getting cleared out now, and they're already on this Baron. We'll see how quickly it goes down. And more importantly, how quickly FlyQuest are willing to face check. I think because they're so far behind, they just know that they've got to go look for it, but they are lining up for the Equalizer. And here we go. First engage comes across. Equalizer not too bad. Palafox kites away. Big Equalizer going back on a Dignitas. Nearly the snipe to kill after him, but he's going to stay alive. That hook could be big, though. They get damaged, but Soligo, he's still very tanky. They pop the Steric Shield. And the fact that FlyQuest can at least disengage without dying mm -hmm. and trading cooldowns, that's not a horrible look. The problem is, though, Dignitas can keep finding pressure elsewhere. Absolutely. And Neo is so threatening in these fights. Verisalt was expended. They are going to be TPing back in. Here comes Palafox. We'll see if they can find the fight. Without the stolen Equalizer, it feels almost more important, ironically, for FlyQuest, because they just don't seem to have enough damage to actually push through these fights without it. You know, Varus is not being a threat to these beefy frontliners, and Palafox with kind of the counter Equalizers has been such a big part of, of keeping FlyQuest alive in this game. But again, Dignitas right back to the pit. They want to keep threatening. They want to pull FlyQuest into fights more often than they're really able to take them. And TP right over the top with Equalizer there. How good are the stuns going to be? Atlantic gets one to save them with the suplex backwards means it's lights out for Jose Diodo. A rampage for Neo in the chase out of Johnson. A great cleanse, but it's not going to be enough. Neo finds a double. Fake God gets the third. Licorice catches part of the wave, but it's too tanky. He's got to run away. Dardox on the chase. Going to go back to finding the top laner. And now it's time to end the game. Two cannot defend against five. I've seen this before. Every Dignitas game, it's always the five who do it better. Dignitas going to find themselves their 13th win, the most, the second most in the LCS so far. Congratulations. Dignitas yet again on top. Looking good. Starting off summer, they had a hot start in spring. They're having a pretty hot start here in summer. Of course, we will have to see, can they maintain this pace as they start to really face off against some of these difficult teams. But the early game, fantastic from Dignitas. I like the look from them. Saligo really was effective on the set. That early roam towards the top side set the pace of the game. Yeah. The fact that the Jace was left open, not only is it one of Fake God's best champions, but it's one of the best lane matchups into the Lee Sin. So you draft for pressure in the top lane, you draft for pressure in the mid lane with your set, you roam up towards the top side, Darduk is there, three-man dive, Licorice was never a factor in this one. Dignitas looking really good in the early minutes, and then Dardoch was just going crazy. Yeah, and, and this is unprompted, but I want to bring it up because I think it's actually really valuable. This is the kind of stuff where if you're really interested in getting better, this is what Proview is actually useful at. Go look at how he manicured the first, what, five, maybe six waves mm -hmm. to set up the giant crash top side to line up for when your jungler has done six camps, ready to go top, your mid laner pushes, goes to the brush like a recall, but goes top like those orchestrated plays, like that is a good setup. And that's the kind of thing you're like, hey, we first pick Rumble, they're gonna take Lee, we've got the counter, and by the way, there's a planned play. Not every game's gonna look like this, yeah. but if you've got priority in mid, and you already know you have priority in top because of the matchup, you just clear bottom of the top, and you make the dive happen. And you play the wave, right, because you have lane control, and here you go. And the thing that's so good about plays like this is I always like to talk about risk versus reward in League of Legends. There was very little risk. If you get up there and Jose Idioto is there, you just back off. They did not roam from mid on a wave that was pushing towards them. They had a fully pushed in wave. Darduk did a full clear. Like there, there was really very little cost to looking for the play. And then when it's there, the game can essentially be just 
so tough from FlyQuest side from that yeah. point because now you're behind. You can't even threaten an all-in on the Jasis Lee Sim post six. So what are you supposed to do? Yeah, we'll get behind on the Lee Sin ultimately and, and you know, didn't have much else to do for him. So beautifully done, of course. Then again, a side two wins so far to start up the summer split. And now I'm going to check in with Patriot Time and Dardock for the Verizon postgame interview. Thank you so much, Rick. I'm indeed here with Dardock. That was quite the performance on Rumble Jungle. Did you, did you even expect to get the champion, honestly? No, actually. Uh, our top laner, Aaron, uh, Fake God, he loves Rumble. And I was asking for Rumble backstage when I was watching the previous game, Spence Cameron was playing it. Uh, and I was, I, I really wanted to play Rumble today. I just had a feeling I was going to do well on him. And Aaron's just, nah, I'm, I'm taking Rumble, bro. So uh, I didn't actually think I was going to get it today, but the draft played out in that favor. So we took Rumble Jungle. For sure. And uh, it's, we're actually kind of generating a pretty uh, fun, healthy debate, I'd say, here. Uh, who is the best Rumble Jungle in North America? Uh, where would you put yourself kind of among the, the Rumble players here? Um, I'm definitely one of the best as far as Jungle goes. I don't think. Any Rumble Jungle players can touch some of the great Rumble laners, like Huni, for example. I think Huni's going to be a cut above the rest as far as Rumble gameplay goes. Um, but as far as junglers go, I think me and Xersei are probably some of the better Rumble players. And for the rest, uh, let's just say I haven't really been impressed by other players on Rumble so yep. far. I get that. And then kind of in the game more specifically, uh, I know one of the things that's been important, and I heard this from Saligo yesterday, is trying to you know get the newer, younger players in the team to communicate a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, this mid-jungle matchup is one that's very reliant on communication. How are the comms in this game between you and Saligo? Um, pretty much every time Max has a timer that he wants to fight on, he's just going to say, yo, Josh, can you come around mid? And if it's good for me, it, we go for it. If not, then we, uh, we communicate a way to work around it. But Max has, we, we do have to work on our communication a bit, more so as a team as a whole. But I think Max has really stepped up, especially now that we are playing games on stage to kind of communicate his part more. For sure. And then last one, uh, I feel like this is a meta where teams are definitely still figuring things out. How do you and the team feel like they're figuring things out? Because, you know, going from Lee Sin Jungle yesterday, which is not very popular, to Rumble Jungle today, which is very popular, to me, it seems like Dig and Tusk has a pretty good grasp on the meta. So, so what do you think of that? Um, I wouldn't say we have a very firm grasp on the meta. It's more so I think our coach helped us in a lot of ways, kind of rearing our mentality more towards just focus on ourselves and what, our, what we think our strength is rather than try to figure out all the answers to, you know, realistically, a ton of new champions and uh, a ton of new draft options that really weren't present in spring. So I guess nowadays we just kind of focused on what was good for this week because to be honest, I don't think anybody has a very firm grasp on what's best in every role, especially with all the new champs coming around. And then given the flexibility that you especially have shown uh, in this year, uh, as far as the different champions you can play, are you confident in your ability, you know, as the game shifts like it always does, to be able to pull out different picks and, and still stay on top of that stuff? Oh, yeah. Yeah? I, I'm very confident in the ability that I have in terms of champion pool, so I'm never going to back down from learning new champs or uh, expanding my champion pool. I think that's a huge strength that every player should strive to have, and you should have total mastery of the game, and that's what I strive to do every day. Definitely showed today. Josh, thank you so much for talking to me. It's been great. No worries. All right, with that, we are going to go to a break, but don't go too far away. There is more LCS coming right up.